Stop that. Uh, quarterback quick reads. Here we go. We're watching some of these preseason games. What did you see from Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville? Yeah, near perfection. He threw it about as good as I've ever seen Trevor Lawrence throw it, Greeny. And the reality is, if the Jags get this version of Trevor Lawrence, they can win the AFC South. And if Trevor Lawrence throws it like this, he's going to be in the MVP conversation for mm. the rest of this season. Geno Smith was really impressive. I think we've slept a little bit on Seattle. You know, that trifecta of wide receivers up there in the conversation, Jackson Smith and Jigba being in year two, DK Metcalf, still that big body guy. Ryan Groove, who's their offensive coordinator, who comes from the University of Washington, worked wonders with some of those young playmakers and Michael Penix Jr. Geno Smith threw the ball downfield exceptionally well. And then Bryce Young. Bryce Young looked like the number one pick. One, I love the pistol. You know, when they line the back up behind him, it's going to balance their offense a little bit. Two, I love how much they moved deliberately Bryce Young. Their offensive line protected him. He made some plays outside of the pocket, moving to his left and beautifully throwing the football. If he can play like this and they can keep him clean, I think you're going to see a huge jump from last year's number one pick. Let's hope that that is the case. A more creative offense. Obviously, it was a very difficult first season, but as we continue our big questions, let's go from one number one overall pick to another. And this is the one the Bears decided to take this year rather than take Bryce Young a year ago. The Bears will open their season home against Tennessee September 8th. The last time the Bears won a playoff game was 2010. Mm. Caleb Williams then was nine years old. So here's my question. I I'm trying not to put, there's been so much conversation about the pressure that is on them. Let me put a reasonable question together for you. D. Wood. When we get to Thanksgiving, will the Bears be in the playoff hunt? Will they be playing meaningful games? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, l listen, when I look at the Chicago Bears, I love what Ryan Poles has done with, the, with this team, with this team, the surrounding mm -hmm. this young quarterback with some really good veteran players. DJ yeah. Moore, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift. Like, these are proven veteran guys. We, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even name, you know, Roma Dunze, the, right. the, the fabulous rookie out of University of Washington, and the defense. If the defense carries over from the last eight games, why in the world wouldn't the Bears be in playing meaningful games, not just Thanksgiving, but in December? Yeah. Uh, and that was, you saw the schedule they have there. It is really backloaded. They play all their division games. The, the last eight games of their schedule are really tough. You see it. All yeah. their division games backloaded there, plus San Francisco and Seattle. Greedy, that's where I was Saturday. I was yeah. at Bears practice mm. in Lake Forest. And I will just say this. Like, there is an energy and an excitement there. And you wonder if Caleb Williams can have the same type of effect that C.J. Stroud had in Houston. You wonder if Jaden Daniels can do that same thing yeah. in Washington. I think that's one of the most intriguing questions about the season. And I know C.J. Stroud has raised the bar and created unrealistic expectations. But Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels, they're that talented that they could raise these teams. And here's the thing. I don't know whether the Bears will be in the playoff hunt at Thanksgiving. My guess would be yes. But if he is what they think he is, the Bears should be relevant and competitive for the next 15 seasons. Mm, yeah. So you are entering a period of peace and prosperity in Chicago at that position. We've seen so many different quarterbacks in Chicago. None of them have succeeded. Mm -hmm. This guy has been built for this. He is ready for this moment. And if he is as good as they think he is, then the Bears are gonna be set for years to come. Is he, Dan? Yeah, I mean, his talent is remarkable, Greeny. I think the biggest challenge for Caleb, and I've talked about this, is, you know, how much he settles into the NFL game. Just because we've seen Patrick Mahomes kind of play at a very unique level doesn't mean that it's going to be able to be replicated. And really the learning of when and when not to, and, you know, maybe that boring style of football a little bit more than the recess or creative style of football that is the jaw-dropping stuff. I think also... You know, Keenan Allen, how healthy Keenan stays. How good Romo Dunze actually is as a top 10 pick. Like, those two guys, we think that they'll be really high-end this year, but Keenan's got to stay healthy. He's one of the best slots in football. You know, you talk about the back end of their schedule. I want to go quickly, Greeny, to the beginning. They play yeah. Tennessee week one. They can win that game. Houston week two, that's probably a tall task. Indy week three, they could win that game. The, the Rams week four, probably a tall task. 
Then they go Carolina. They could be Carolina, Jacksonville. We'll see. They could be Carolina, Jacksonville, Washington, Arizona. So the beginning part of the schedule is not daunting. That, that's the point, is they need to get up to a quick start while Caleb right. is just sort of ramping up 10 <laughs> days away from the season. So we got 10 big questions. Let's do some rapid fire. Hey, Dan Orlovsky, can the Eagles turn it around after an abysmal season? And can Jalen Hurts become an MVP candidate this season? Yeah, I think he is, Greeny. One, he's got to stay healthy, remain adamant that he wasn't specifically down the stretch. I think they have the best trio of wide receivers in football now with the addition of Jahan Dotson, one of the th uh, four of the better pass catchers if you throw in Dallas Goddard. Kellen Moore got to figure out how to utilize his legs, but I think this is going to be a very explosive offense led by Jalen Hurts. Looking for a big bounce back from the quarterback. D. Wood, I come to you on Kansas City. Will they become the first team ever to win three straight Super Bowls? I'll repeat, other teams have won three straight NFL championships. No one's ever won three straight Super Bowls. Can Kansas City do it? They can. I don't think they will. And <clears throat> throughout this throughout this stretch, the one thing that's, that they've been remarkable at is staying healthy. Right. That's usually one of the key pieces in any team you know, running the gauntlet. And we've seen it now for a couple years with Kansas City Chiefs. They've been remarkably healthy. To do it for a third year in a row, mm. I, man, that, that would be tough. So I'm going to say no. So long as the guy wearing number 15 stays healthy, yeah. they've at least got a fighting <laughs> chance. Uh, and then we go to the team they beat in that Super Bowl, and that's San Francisco. Here's the big question. Are they still the team to beat in the NFC? And there are major factors here, Shefty. Trent Williams, Brandon Ayuk, two of their best players. What's going on? Well, right now, the two situations continue to be unsettled. Brandon Ayuk traveled with the team to Las Vegas this weekend for the 49ers preseason finale versus the Raiders. But this is still a situation that still could go a lot of different ways. Now, the 49ers' focus is on trying to retain Brandon Ayuk and keep him in San Francisco. But the two sides have been unable to get a long-term deal done. The 49ers have let it be known to other teams like Pittsburgh that they prefer not to trade him, that they prefer to keep him unless they can get a wide receiver back in a deal, which that's been the rub with the Steelers. They don't have a wide receiver to offer back, and there's not another wide receiver across the league that the 49ers view as somebody capable of stepping into the hole that Brandon Ayuk would leave. So there's a lot of questions out there which leaves this situation in flux. But again, August 26th, still not resolved. The 49ers regular season opener is two weeks from tonight against your Jets. Yes. And the Brandon Ayuk situation right now, it's still hard to predict exactly the way it's going to unfold. And the Trent Williams situation. And also, also, has... also, not great right now. They're not close to a deal. Now, I think we're at a critical juncture here, and it's go time. And one of these deals, both these deals could come together very quickly. But nothing's been quick with either one of these situations all summer long with a lot of these lingering situations. They've dragged on longer than most. And usually when you get to August 26, much of this NFL business is wrapped up. Yeah. There's really just a few things. We got cuts tomorrow. We have teams putting together their practice squads. I don't remember the last time you had this many significant unresolved issues as the regular season were approaching. Bunch of receivers, we talked about it earlier, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, we're still waiting to figure all that stuff out, and the Trent Williams one. 